Good morning, everyone. This is T3 Live Editor-in-Chief John Darcy. And I'm Brittany Umar, and together we bring you Morning Call Express. So world markets are mainly up a little bit. Our futures are pointing to a higher open on news that the dovish Janet Yellen is expected to be named chairman of the Federal Reserve later today. So, John, do you think this is what will help get our markets back on more solid footing? Yeah, after Larry Summers withdrew his name from consideration for the new Fed chairman, I think it was pretty much a formality that Yellen was going to get the nod. And maybe, you know, the president was holding uh, this news sort of in his back pocket until the market needed uh, that type of shot in the arm. And yesterday, obviously, we had some uh, some major damage in the market. So, you know, what do we get uh, overnight? We get news that uh, Yellen is going to be the nominee for Fed chairman. And what she's going to bring is some continuity. Uh, she is very dovish. She is a supporter of a sort of risky experimental uh, monetary policy like QE. Uh, but you can't really get that much more dovish than the, the current chairman, uh, Ben Bernanke. So I think uh, more than anything, it'll just bring some continuity. I think it will bring a little bit of peace of mind to the market, but I don't think it'll be anything more than uh, just a short-term shot in the arm. And then, like you said, futures are only up about five or six handles this morning, so uh, the impact is not terribly great. I think, obviously, there's much more weight being placed on the government shutdown, a potential debt ceiling situation. Well, speaking of short-term, then, what are the key levels that we should watch in, say, the S&P heading into the open? Let we'll take a look at the chart of the S&P, and as we can see, this trend line that everybody's been watching in the S&P uh, from those November lows, we'll go to the weekly chart to get a better look at it, from that November reversal, we've uh, held this key trend line multiple times over uh, the course of this year. Yesterday, we closed below it on a daily chart, but now it'll be key to see whether or not we are able to climb back above that trend line uh, on a weekly chart. If we do close below it on a weekly chart, that could be a major complexion change on a more intermediate term basis rather than just short term damage. Uh, so that'll be something to watch. And then you could watch also the 21 week moving average uh, zooming out to the weekly chart as a potential area of support um, heading into the next few weeks of trading. Well, in making sense of yesterday's action and seeing how it translates into today, let's take a look at the tech sector where we saw major damage yesterday. Do you think this is potentially hedge funds making room for the Twitter IPO? Yeah, I mean, you basically had all these tech stocks and even biotech stocks hold up extremely well over the last few weeks. Uh, and, you know, while markets were sort of bleeding lower, these tech stocks were holding up sort of lulling people to sleep into a false sense of confidence. And then in one fell swoop in one day, they come in and they just whack all these, these tech stocks. And like you said, most of the ones that got hit the hardest were in that social media, new media group uh, that you know, some pundits were suggesting that perhaps uh, hedge fund managers are making room in their portfolios for something like Twitter. Uh, and stocks that you saw uh, get hit the hardest were ones like LinkedIn. Look at that chart of LinkedIn. I mean, that's a huge down bar there. Entered this gap from late July. Uh, major complexion change there. Unless it can reclaim this bar quickly, uh, if you do get some choppy action and, and a shallow retracement of this down bar, like you could see more downside. Another example, Facebook. Facebook's one that I'd be more inclined to, to buy on the dip, but you did get a major, uh, major drop yesterday there as it dropped something around 7%. Uh, but it is right near the 21-day moving average, so in the context of its recent move, not a ton of damage, but uh, something to keep an eye on there. Pandora, another example got hit really hard after rallying back to highs after this initial big drop. Also closed below its 21 day, trying to hold on to some uh, crumbs of bullish composure, I guess you could say. And then Yelp also, another one that perhaps is being dumped to make room for Twitter. Closed below its 21 day, in jeopardy of breaching this upper level uh, base. But keep an eye on these to see if they get more downside. If they do, it would lead to major, major technical damage in these names. And then meanwhile, we saw classic flight to safety moves. We saw some strength out of the utilities and the consumer staple stocks. Uh, how do you think that will translate into today? Yeah, I mean, I think this is going to be a short-term trend. As we get closer to the government or to the, the debt ceiling deadline, I think people are going to perhaps flock into those safety type stocks because they're afraid of uh, being in riskier assets like tech. And we obviously we saw tech get hit hard yesterday. But over the longer term basis, over a multi-month basis, I don't think you'll see people piling into those safe sectors. You know, QE has reached, I think, its maximum uh, for this cycle at least. And I think uh, the Fed is looking to wind down QE, and that's a negative for defensive sectors. But when you have headline news and all, this, uh, all these dangerous headlines going on right now, I think people look for a little bit lower beta, lower volatility. That's why you saw strength yesterday in, in sectors like the utilities. Uh, the XLU was up. 1% uh, for most of the day, gave back some of its gains into the close, but uh, in, a, in a, such a negative tape, it's interesting to see the XLU finish higher. XLP finished around the flat line. Uh, consumer staples still holding, trying to hold above its 200-day moving average. 
Uh, and then you, all, you saw gold try to bounce, but poor, poor old gold uh, couldn't get much of a move. Actually finished negative despite all the fear and turmoil in the market. So that's a really bearish sign for gold. I think you could see gold head lower. And really quickly, we do have Apple up this morning on news of a product launch or a product event rather on October 22nd. That's rumored to be the new iPad. Just key levels to watch in Apple today. Yeah, Apple, like you said, October 22nd event. The buzz is going again. Uh, small gap up this morning. You take a look at the chart of Apple. It's another one that did have a harsh down move yesterday, but actually it dropped about 1.4%. And the NASDAQ dropped 2%, so you could even say Apple showed relative strength. Uh, just closed below its 21-day moving average, so it's sort of hanging on by a thread to its, bull to its bullish composure. You see the wedge pattern forming here. Uh, still in the game for higher prices, but any more downside follow-through today would take it out of the game, but we are getting a gap up, so something definitely to keep an eye on. All right, and stay with us for the full morning call.